What you see in front of you on the hyperwall is a 22,000 by 6,000 image. It's a panorama that we took of Mars. We took it five years ago by the Spirit rover. And it was only possible to create that by a really dedicated and incredible team of engineers, planetary scientists, and people working together from all over the world. So as we zoom in on the left, you can see this white trail. Uh, that's silica, and that was deposited out by the wheel. The wheel became stuck, and it dropped out the silica as it moved along. That led in turn to our looking and understanding how evaporates work and that there was a water history in this region and led to one of our principal findings. So looking for water on Mars uh, and looking for a history of water on Mars is why we sent this rover to Mars in the first place. What you're looking at now is a picture from Hubble. This is a Carina Nebula. Um, and in science, every pixel is important. And as we zoom closer and closer into the image, you see more and more detail. The dark structures you see are dust clouds that are birthplaces for stars and for planets, planets like Earth. So these tools are useful to us, and we can manage large and complex data systems for engineering data or for biological systems. Um, and use that to understand the, the connections the, between the subsystems of, of the various systems we're looking at. Like the neurons you see here in this rat brain image from Mark Ellisman at UCSD, you can see the individual Purkinje, Purkinje nerve cells and how they connect across the layers of the cerebellum to transmit information but you can also see the larger structure of the brain itself. We use technologies to monitor our data across time as well, as you see here in the video from the Solar Dynamic Observatory. This was taken on June 7th, and it shows a solar eruption down here at the bottom. This mission brings down 1.5 terabytes of data a day, and the science team at Stanford and Lockheed Martin are using walls like this to help them process and analyze the images. Complexity also plays out in multiple data sets. What we have here, we see whirlwind, and we can overlay data sets like ocean temperature, rainfall, but then add in interdisciplinary things like population density or economic data, things that are geotagged, so we can start to see how data relates together and better understand the bigger picture of our world. We're also looking at new ways of visualizing data. This is a 3D image of a ribosome from Lauren Williams' lab in, at Georgia Tech, and what it allows us to do is actually you know, get inside the data, see how the molecules are connected to better understand the structure and the origin, the structure of the ribosome, the origin of life, and the building blocks of life. So we have all these technologies to help us visualize data, visualize information, to better un understand our world, but we can also take these technologies to make our worlds smaller. And what we have here are some pictures from the NASA Astrobiology Institute's Workshops Without Walls. And this is a, a way that we've come to bring people together, to bring scientists together to have these virtual science workshops without having to travel. We connect their lecture halls, their offices, their conference rooms. We even connect them from home. And we connect them across disciplines as well. So they don't have to travel. There's a reduction in cost, but there's also a reduction in the carbon footprint. But maybe even more importantly, we allow people to connect and have insights across disciplines that wouldn't have come together and met if they'd had to travel to meet in person. What we see next are uh, two images, an image on the left and an image on the right, of two teams that are using tools like this hyperwall to collaborate. The team on the left is the Mars rover team planning Spirit rovers traverse on Mars. The team on the right is a group working on a joint document, and they're using this virtual hyperspace environment in order to do that development. So sitting in the background of all of this are software systems, and the particular one we use in this instance is called Sage. Sage is particularly valuable because it allows us to take many interacting systems, inputs, and interact with those on the, on the screen together. 
So for example, you could have your tablet in the audience and be manipulating, or you could have your um, laptop and be manipulating as well as half a dozen other people. So in particular, in our system today, over in the corner is John, and John is actually controlling the system from his laptop. And Larry, who I've lost track of, Larry, right there, Larry's laptop can be shown on the, on the display as well, and we can have multiple, lots of people gathered around, yes, there's Larry, <laughs> using these uh, collaborative spaces. So we've really evolved from the age of the individual personal computer into what I think of as more of the group computer, the collaborative environment. And these larger displays that you see here, they allow you to put a lot of information on the display at once and see it all together. It's like external memory because we have so much data, so much stuff we're working with all the time now. So it's external memory, but it's also external cognition. As we move the documents and all the items around, it helps us make sense of what we're seeing. What you're looking at in this picture is the background behind the, behind the wall, right? So the electronics. And I want to take that, I want to make a point about that, which is that it, we are collaborating human beings. That's what we do. And in this case, we're collaborating both across time and space. And the time part's particularly unusual because in, to build this, it depends on electronics, which depends on Maxwell's equations for electromagnetism, which were invented or created more than 100 years ago. So clearly, that sort of transition in time is taking place. In addition, um, this collaboration of human beings is really the essence of what we do. It's really the essence of what it means to be a human being, is the ability to collaborate both in time and in space. There are two big problems that I want to say a little bit about, and one of those is sustainability on our Earth. How do we, do, how do we sustain the Earth? And the other of which is climate. And, and the thing I really just want to say is they're really hard, right? and it's going to take all of us working together in a as a collaborative system, as a collaborative group in order to solve this? The social problems and the scientific problems we face are complex. They span many different disciplines and they span many different borders. These collaborative technologies allow us to open up portals between universities, between offices, between homes, homes on the earth and homes in space. We're building a globally connected community, a world without walls, where we can come and work together to solve problems, but we can also experience each other on a human level, sharing emotions and sharing experiences, like the sunset that you see here on Mars. Thank you.